over the years, I tried to steer away. Like, if a tree falls was um, a Texas Chainsaw. Like, I love Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's my favorite horror film of all time. And I wanted to go out and film a movie like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, finally. And they entered how they went and filmed it, right? Like, very small crew, no budget, like, just went out and did it. Um, but then after If a Tree Falls, I kind of um, annoyed with how horror was going. I was like, I don't want to make full frontal horror films anymore like this. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I needed, I needed to take a break and explore other avenues of horror. So, In the House of Flies was a step out of the usual horror and more of um, horror on, on, on a couple, horror and romance and, and horror on human on the human condition, you know, two people stuck together. And then after that, um, that movie led me to think about revenge. It was like, okay, like this couple, like after all they went through, everything they went through, you know, if they survived, I don't want to give anything away, but if they survived it, how, would they take revenge? So after In the House of Flies, I started thinking about topics about revenge and stuff and how people can, how far will someone go to, to do revenge? If, if something bad, like super bad happened, would you go out if someone kidnapped your daughter and killed her and you knew that person, what would you do? Would you go become a vigilante and go hunt this person down? Would you hunt these people down or would you go to the law? I can't sleep at night and when I do finally drift off, when the nightmare takes over. Any character, the basis is written there for you, right? And if you're working with someone as great as Gabriel, then they give you even more than that. But as an actor, it's your job to take them from page to screen. And as you do that, then you find the character, builds more characteristics, and they become more defined. So yeah, it was a mutual effort, I think, between the two of us. And in the end, I really, you know, I'm very happy with the woman that Marie was. She was real, like, a, a grip girl. Let's just sell the house and move back home. You know you can't get your treatment back there. I fell in love with Samantha's character and really felt like um, at this point in my career, it was such an amazing opportunity to um, really latch on and, and go with that role. I loved it because there's just so many layers and um, there's so much silence in the film with my character, but within that silence, you know, there's just... There's so many layers. Um, she had so much happen to her in such a quick amount of time. And, um, you know, dealing with that and what you would do and, you know, what she would do and how people handle things differently. And there's just something so deep and raw with figuring out that character. And, um, you know, having a spinal cord injury is just something so serious and something so major um, that you know, at that point in my career, I was like, how can I say no to this? Like, it's just such an opportunity to explore such a um, dynamic character. I was in the military for a bit, so I had a lot of um, experience with, with dealing with people with PTSD and learning about that and whatnot. So that really helped me kind of mold what Marie was going to. And I think the symptoms of PTSD you can really see throughout each character in the film. And it kind of, it really focuses on how an evil can take a hold of you and how hard it is sometimes to fight back from that. Gabriel and I talked a lot about the character and, and where we saw her because there were just so many avenues we could take her down. You know, we even dabbled in, you know, taking her character down, um, like Kristen Scott Thomas in Only God Forgives. You know, we could go that route, or we can go another route, or we could play the victim, or, you know, there's just so many different ways we could take her. And um, we talked for months about it because, um, you know, the script, like many scripts, just kept changing. Um, but I don't think it was until almost when we were on set, <laughs> it was like the week of, that we were like, that's it, you know, and we and we had it, and uh, we had all the backstory, and we had, you know, the drive behind her and everything that had happened. The three of us, me, Tiana, Nori, and Ryan Bear, we kind of created our own little world 
um, that they had in the past. And it was it was kind of a choice that we made as artists to create our own backstories and really dive into that, um, which included the past happiness. And through that, it was our hope that the audience would sense just how much each character has suffered. You know, we, we, we didn't feel the need to slap our audience in the face with, with the good times that they once had yeah. and just kind of focus on how deep a darkness can take over you as a, as a human. What was it like working with the practical effects on, on, the, on the set? You know, Howard, that's just another day at the office. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a football player playing with a football. I don't know. It's, it doesn't bother me at all. Yeah. Um, I just hope, you know, in the end my mother can watch it. For the scenes where it's Samantha and Bruce, um, they are more slow burn character driven mm -hmm. and Gabriel focused on the visual aspect of that yes but he also wanted the camera to capture the rawest moments between Bruce and Samantha mm -hmm. Bruce, Bruce and Samantha um, so to answer your question more clearly I uh, I think my personal challenge perhaps was um, that I wasn't able to talk to Gabriel sometimes on certain things that were changing in in the script and, and on set, you know, like that happens uh, because he was wearing so many hats on set because it was just such a small crew for as me, me as an actor, because I knew that this was his baby. I wanted to make sure, you know, that I was giving his vision what it deserved and what he wanted. And he just trusted me enough to know that no matter what I did, it, it would fit. And he said that to me, you know, and, um, which gave me confidence, but also made me a little scared. Being like, okay, <laughs> as long as you're saying it, you know, because things were changing and I had no control over it, and and um, the storyline was changing. So I was like, whoa, 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 okay, like, is this, you know, kind of thing. And um, so that was a little bit challenging for me um, because it was my first time working with him, uh -huh. but. He gives his actors that trust, and he's just like, you know what? I trust you guys. This is why I've hired you, and um, there's something really cool and great in that as well. Um, another part of my prep preparation was I went to the police station, and uh, this was the fun part of it, and worked with three officers on... Uh, you know, like what it would be like to be a police officer because I'm not. And um, I'm very hands-on and like I will do anything, any kind of research I can possibly do. So, you know, I, I asked and they brought me in and I had three officers training me and teaching me how to use a gun and what to do in situations of attack. And um, they pu pushed me around and tested me and roughed me up. And it was, it was an amazing experience. I'm so thankful for them. It was so fun. You know, people who are expecting just another revenge film, I say just sit back and relax. Enjoy it. You know, we we kind of broke the mold there, and we did something very passionate and different, and um, just in, enjoy it because it's, it's not just your everyday, you know, run-of-the-mill revenge film, and I think people like that. You know, that's what we're looking for now, something different, something outside of the box. Uh -huh. I think men who, or women, who, who, who watch this movie will probably, you know, it'll dig deep a little bit and make them think, you know, well, what if this happened to me? You know, and they'll be able to relate to Bruce's frustrations and gut-wrenching need for for revenge in that. Um, I mean, what if your woman or partner had been beaten almost to death, uh, perhaps raped, and, and that and that person or, or people were not in jail or are still out there while your partner's freedom to walk and career and happiness has been stripped away from them. I mean, what would you do? And I think that's the difference in this movie. It's raw, it's slow burn. It's you, yeah, it has action, but it's, it's got like depth on a different level and it's more of the style of like drive and only God forgives on a slow burn level. It was such a crazy whirlwind shoot. Um, I I might even forget half of what went down, you know what I mean? But that's exciting for me because I'm going to watch it and I'm going to be like, oh, wow, that's amazing. Look at that. Like, I don't even remember doing it. But I, you know what? There was so much hard work put in that there's nothing that I wish to be cut out, nothing that I'm like, oh, I really hope this part's in it. But, you know, I trust Angus and Gabriel, um, Angus the editor, and Gabriel to put together the best product. And I'm just really excited to finally see it. I can't sleep at night, and when I do finally drift off, that's when the nightmare takes over.